Let's pray. You all can be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful to be here in your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. Thank you so much for the love that's in this room. We declare that we're taking this love home with us because love never fails. God, matter of fact, I pray peace to rest on each person's heart watching, each person's heart that's right here, people that are serving in the parking lot, people that are in the children's center right now. God, touch their heart right now with your peace and touch their household, their homes, and their extended family with your peace. God, we thank you so much for your love. We receive it. We thank you. We exchange all anxiety for your joy, all burden for your relief. And we call it done in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you all. Thank you for coming to service. Thank you for watching online. I love Generosity Week because, you know, it's more of a blessing to give than it is to receive, right? Yeah, it so is. And someone sent in a um, thank you. They called the church yesterday because they were at the gas giveaway. And I just wanted to share it with you because it touched my heart. And I know it would bless you guys. So this person called in and they said, hi, I was the recipient of some free gas today at your hands. And I want to say how much of a blessing it was for my husband and I because we're going through a very difficult time. Right now he's out of a job. And it was really such a wonderful thing that your people were so kind and so helpful. And it was so organized, she goes on to say. She said, I just wanted to leave a message and let you know how much we appreciate it. I'm going to try to find you on Facebook and leave a very good review. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Yeah. And she said, thank you again, and God bless you. So you guys, join with me. Let's pray for her, and let's pray for her husband to get a job, right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into agreement for this amazing woman and her husband. We pray, Lord God, that you blow their socks off with your love and your provision. We declare that doors will be open for him not to just get a job, but to get something that uh, uses his skills, his gifts, and his talents, and makes him feel fulfilled as a person. We thank you, Lord God, for securing them financially financially, but also emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And Lord, if they don't know who you are, thank you for making yourself clear and real to them that they would surrender their life to Jesus. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you guys so much for giving throughout the year because really we couldn't do it without you. And being generous, it changes the way people see church, right? And that's our vision, to represent Jesus and change the way people see church. But what the enemy likes to do with us, he likes to get us so distracted by our own challenges and our own problems that we can't even notice the fact that someone else might be going through. So that's why it's so important to come into a community like this where you can be sharpened and encouraged by your brothers and sisters because God wants us to be a light in a dark place. So um, the holiday season in particular, it's December. I know the end of the year can be, whoo, by the time you get to January, you're like, thank God I made it, right? So I feel like my job is just really to encourage you today. This is a very light message because God wants me to just remind you that even though tough times may be ahead or might be in front of you or you might be going through a little bit of anxiety, stress because of uh, deadlines at work and deadlines with school, he wanted me to tell you that you were born for this. That's my message title. I was born for this. Turn to your neighbor. Say, say, maybe you didn't know, but I was born for this. Turn to somebody else. Come on, you got to look at them. That means you got to turn your neck. If you're at home by yourself, just type it in the chat. Say, I was born for this. Find another neighbor and look at him and say, you were born for this. Yeah. Yeah. You were. You were born for such a time as this. I know. I know sometimes we look at the news and we're like, ooh, Jesus, when are you going to come and get us? But I just want to encourage you, 2023 in Arizona, you are right where you're supposed to be. You watching online, you were supposed to be born for such a time as this. I know the times might look crazy, but you are a culture changer for Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Say it again. Say, I was born for this. Mordecai made this statement to Esther, and you have to think about Queen Esther in the Old Testament. A law went out by the king, and once they made a decree, they couldn't change it. 
which is really deep. And the decree was that all of the Jews were to be annihilated on a certain day. So they literally knew what day this massacre was supposed to occur. Talk about pressure. So here she is, the queen. She knows about this decree. And her cousin, some people say her cousin or her uncle. I really haven't figured out if it's her cousin or her uncle. But the man who raised her, because she was an orphan, okay, encouraged her and said, hey, you got to do something about this. You know, you're the queen. Talk to your husband. And she was like, yeah, he's my husband. He's a little cray-cray. If you walk in there, you know, if you walk in there and he didn't call you, it's off with your head. So it doesn't matter that I'm the queen because he's a little crazy. And Mordecai was like, listen here. If you think that God's not going to rescue his people, you you sadly mistaken. He'll, he'll, he'll raise up someone else to do it if you won't do it. But you need to recognize that you're probably there. This is probably the whole reason why you became queen in the first place. You were there for such a time as this. And we have to remember that when we're on our job and we're looking at our boss sideways like, ooh, you crazy. You have to remind yourself you were born for this. You were put there strategically to be a light. You were born for this. You look at your family sometimes, you're like, ooh, look at all this dysfunction. (laughs) But listen, you are called to redeem it. Say, I was born for this. this. Pastor says all the time, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Uh huh. And Ford had a slogan years ago called, built built for tough. Right? Ah, say it with me, say it. Built. Built for tough. Well, pastor preached a message years ago called Built God Tough. Built God Tough. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will harden us to difficulties. He will harden us on the outside so that the arrows of the enemy will just bounce right off of us. It's called the armor of God. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6. It says that our feet are shed with the gospel of peace. Our belt is, is, is the belt of truth. Our helmet is the helmet of salvation. We have on the breastplate of righteousness. We have the shield of faith. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Come on, you aren't out here by yourself. You were born for this. Put on your spiritual weapons and give the devil a beat down. Say, I was born for this. Yes, you were. 1 John 3, verse 8. This is what Jesus was described as. It says, for this purpose, in in the B part of the verse, for this purpose, the Son of God, or Jesus, was manifested or born, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the whole purpose for him to come into the earth was to destroy the works of the devil. But look at what 1 John 4 says. Verse 17, that B part says about you and me, as he, Jesus Christ is, so are we in this world. Let me let you chew on that for a second. So Jesus was born to destroy the works of the devil. As he is, so are we now. So if he was born to destroy the works of the devil, what were we born to do? To destroy the works of the devil. So you're a demon slayer. Come on. You're a mountain remover. You're a water walker. Come on. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. So when you're tempted to quit, when you're tempted to say, I can't take this anymore, it's too hard, you need to remind yourself, I was born for this. Somebody say it with me. I was. Yeah, that's right. If you're a teacher, let's make it real practical. If you're a teacher, you're not just called to grade papers. You're called to walk in there. Pray over those seats and destroy the works of the devil on those students. You're called to call, the, to call those parents up and encourage them and destroy the works of the devil in their hearts and mind. You're called to destroy the works of the devil on the school board. You're called to destroy the works of the devil off your faculty and your fellow employee, employees and your, and your coworkers. You're not called to just get a check. Anywhere you are, you are there to destroy the works of the devil. How do we do that? With the word of God. With the love of God, being who we are. We are ambassadors of heaven. Hallelujah. So the minute we step into a place, heaven is available because you're there, because I'm there. And it's so important that we remind ourselves this because the enemy lies constantly to get us to think that we don't have the goods we already have. Remember when he talked to Eve in the garden? He said, hey, if you eat this, you're going to be like God. She already was like God. 
God created her in his image and in his likeness and was walking with her in the cool of the garden. You already are created in God's image and likeness. You already have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. He said, if I be with you, if I be for you, who can be against you? Oh, but they're laying off on my job. You don't think God can give you another job? Come on now. Say, I was born for this. Come on. You were born for this. You were born to destroy the works of the devil. You weren't born to flirt with the works of the devil. You were born to destroy the works of the devil, not to participate in the works of the devil. You were born to destroy the works of the devil, not to be overcome by the works of the devil. Come on, you have the victory. You heard that story, Jerice. She was, her parents were told when she was a baby, say goodbye. She's not even going to make it home. She's a grown married woman now. God gets the last word, honey. I said God gets the last word. You don't ever let the devil tell you it's too late. It's too late for you. You're too old. You're too young. You're not educated enough. You don't have enough money. Your God created the entire universe with the words of his mouth, and he died to redeem you from death, hell, and the grave. If God be for you, nobody can be against you. The only way we fail is if we give the enemy the victory ourselves. He can't take it from us. He has to convince us to cooperate with him. That's why he lies. He lies because he has to put us on self-check. We have to defeat ourselves because he's not strong enough to do it. And the more you remind yourself of that, fear has to go. Because fear is a lie. Perfect love casts out all fear. And my father, God, he is love. And he loves you so much. He loves you. He loves me more than we're even capable of loving ourselves. And that perfect love immediately gives us the victory when we embrace it and when we receive it for ourselves. Say, I was born for this. Come on, let's look at Isaiah 41. I love this passage. Isaiah 41, verse 10 in the Amplified, it says, Do not fear anything, God said, because I am with you. My gosh, we can go home on that. Look at the second line. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. He repeated himself. The way, the truth, and the life had to repeat himself because sometimes we don't believe what he's saying. But he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he needs to repent. If he said he's with you, baby, he's with you. He said, I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand. It's a hand of justice. It's a hand of power. It's a hand of victory. It's a hand of salvation. My God, salvation means healing. It means deliverance. It means wholeness. It means preservation. What do you need to be made whole? What do you need preserved? God said, I got it. I got you covered. So anxiety, please, please. I send it right back to the sender, the devil. It doesn't belong to me. God belongs to me. Say, I got this. I was born for this. God, I receive your strength. I receive your encouragement. Devil, you can take this anxiety back. You can take all the fear back. You can take all the anger back. You can take all the pain back. You can take all the trauma back. Jesus, I receive your peace. I receive your provision. I receive your controlled mind. Emotions, rest. Take a deep breath in, blow out all anxiety. Wow. Listen, when Jesus died on the cross, it was the most beautiful demonstration of an exchange we've ever seen. He hung on that cross in our place, and he took every single thing that could ever destroy our relationship with God, and he held it for us. And then he said, it is finished. And when he said, it is finished, he hung his head. The Bible says he gave up the ghost. The temple had a big, thick curtain. 
and it says that it ripped in two. That, that curtain separated the people from God's presence. There is no longer any separation. We no longer need a priest to go in who's perfect, sinless the whole year to make petitions to the Lord. We can talk to God directly now. There is no weapon formed against you or I that can prosper. And the only thing that can stop us is our own mindset. And this is why the Bible tells us that we are to renew our mind on his word. And so I just want to encourage you. I know it gets busy during the holidays, but my God, play an audio Bible while you're driving. Get the word of God in your heart because the enemy is afraid of you. He's terrified of you reaching your full potential. He's terrified of you using the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to fight demons off of your family, to fight generational curses and to defeat them. He's terrified that you'll open your eyes and take the authority and the dominion that Jesus gave to you. So let's do it. Amen. Say, I was born for this. Psalm 30 and 5 says, though weeping may endure for a night, your joy will come in the morning. Good news, you get to determine when it's morning. I don't care what's going on in society. You get to determine. It's morning time. My joy is here right now. Romans 8.31 says, if God before you, who can be against you? You were born to dominate in your sphere of influence. You were born to shift culture, not to succumb to culture. You were born to end the curses in your family, not to come under them. You were born to be a representative of Jesus Christ and the Most High God. And it doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter if there was lots of dysfunction or lots of wealth. You still are privileged to know the great God who loves you regardless. And you are a great representation to everyone in your sphere of influence that if God can use you, he can use them. It doesn't matter how tainted your past. I heard about a guy who was convicted for double homicide, spent like 30 years in prison, and came out a pastor. Living for God, getting people saved every minute. It doesn't matter. We see that in the Bible. Saul. Saul was killing Christians, and God said, hey, I can use that guy. He's full of zeal. I love how God's hopes are so faithless. Most of us would have looked at Saul and been like, he crazy. Somebody lock him up. God looked at him and was like, yeah, he's going to work for me. He's great. I love him. So it doesn't matter how bleak your situation is. God can take any mess and turn it into a masterpiece. All he needs is your yes. Say, God, you have my yes because I was born for this. What does the Bible have to say about the struggles you might be having in your finances or on your job or in your body, in your marriage, in your family, with your children right now. I'm so glad you asked. We're going to go through these scriptures, and baby, you better be running around the church by the time we're done. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, it says, for our light affliction, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. That's the best part. It's only for a moment. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So whatever that struggle is, it's not working against you. Put it on your payroll and you make it work for you. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 in the Message Bible. They made it real plain, so I just had to give it to you. It says, so we're not giving up. Say, I'm not giving up. Say it again. I'm not giving up. Come on, you guys. January, how many married people do we have in here? Or watching online. Say, yep, that's me, that's me. January is known as divorce month. Divorces go up one-third in January. So all the married people say, we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart, on the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by. Not, come on now, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes. Wow, small potatoes. Y'all need to go home and eat some potato soup. They're small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now, they're here today. They're gone tomorrow. But the things we cannot see, they last forever. Somebody shout out, I was born for this. John 16, 33, these things I spoke to you that in me you would have peace, Jesus said. In the world you will have tribulation. Notice what he said. He didn't say you might have tribulation. Jesus said, you will. So listen, believer, don't be so shocked. Jesus said, 
and you will have tribulation. What did I do for this? To you didn't have to do nothing. You just have to be alive, amen? There will be tribulation, but look what he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And remember, as he is, so are we. So if he overcame, honey, you overcome. Say, I was born for this. Come on, I was born for this. Philippians 1.6, being confident. God wants us to be confident in who we are in him. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me, in you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Every time you're tempted to say, it's too hard, I can't do this, I'm throwing in the towel, how much more can I take? Oh, you have to remember the good work that he began in you, the good work he began in your spouse, the good work he began in your kids, the good work he began in your family, the good work he began in that company that he told you to start. He will complete it. He will never give up on you. We cannot give up on him. Say, I was born for this. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. I love this. Paul said this. He said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, there are haters, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Come on. When the enemy comes with a one-two punch, baby, you punch right on back. Say, I was born for this. And the final scripture I want to share is Proverbs 17, 17. There's two more. It says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. I'm going to say that again. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Sometimes when we're going through a tough time, we tend to self-isolate. We feel like, oh, everybody else has their own problems. I don't want to burden them. But the Bible tells us the reason you're friends with that person is for the time of adversity. We're not islands of Christ. We're the body of Christ. All right? And let me share this with you, too. I love this one. James 5, 16. It says, confess your faults or even your sins one to another, which requires humility. Amen? And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Some translations say it makes tremendous power available. So instead of us, you know, nursing and rehearsing and milking our trouble alone, we need to humble ourselves and say, hey, I'm having a tough time. This has been a rough week. Can you please pray with me? The Bible says that it will avail much, make tremendous power available, and you'll be healed. Some of us, we get our needs met, but we're still broken on the inside. That's not good enough for God. God doesn't want you to just get your bill paid. He wants you to get free from the fear of not ever having enough. So he doesn't want just, you know, put a Band-Aid on the issue. He wants you fully healed. And that's why we're here today. You online, I would love for you to type in the chat, that's me. I've been having a tough time. I need somebody to pray for me. You in the room, if that's you, this has been a really rough month for me. I'll be transparent. If it's been a rough month for you and you just feel like giving, up the, giving in the towel, I'm tired of this marriage. I'm tired of these kids. I'm tired of this job. I'm tired of this work. I never have enough. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. And you've been tempted to quit. You've been tempted to run away. You've been tempted to hurt yourself. Let's humble ourselves and raise our hand because we're going to pray for each other. Look at these hands all over the room. If you're online, you type, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Now, if you see a hand near you and your hand is not up, I want you to move towards someone who has their hand up, and I want you to pray for them because one day it might be you with your hand up. Go ahead. We're going to move. We're going to move, and we're going to pray for our brother. We're going to pray for our sister. We're going to pray like it was our mother. We're going to pray like it was our father. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come into agreement. If your hand is up and nobody is praying for you, keep it up until someone comes. Keep it up till someone comes. And let's not pray little Mickey Mouse prayers. Come on, this whole room should be buzzing with volume. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into agreement that what is ailing them will leave them before we say amen. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the answer. We thank you, Lord God, for opening eyes and ears into the spirit realm. We declare that the deception of the enemy will no longer hold them captive or bound. We break every fear. We break every lie. We break every generational curse. We break witchcraft in the name of Jesus. There are people all over on this left side with their hands raised with no one praying for them. If you need to stand so people see you, go ahead and stand. 
Come on, believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. Believers pray and people are healed. You don't have to be a minister. You just have to believe in Jesus. God, we rebuke the stress and the anxiety of this season. We say that it will not overtake them. We declare that they have the mind of Christ. The enemy has been lying to some of you and telling you that you're having a nervous breakdown. You're losing your mind. You need to increase medication. And the Lord says, I am your medication. My word is full of gospels. Come unto me those that are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest for your soul. Thank you, God, for the rest and the peace that you offer. We declare that they are exchanging anxiety and fear for rest, peace, and joy unspeakable and full of glory. God, we thank you that you are meeting their physical needs. You are meeting their financial needs. You are meeting their social needs. We thank you, God, that you are breaking the back of the enemy right now. We thank you that you are breaking confusion in their household right now. We thank you that we are coming against in the spirit realm all divisiveness. Thank you, God. You said that where anointing, where the where unity is, the anointing is there. So, God, we thank you for the anointing resting over their heart and mind as we are united as one, praying as brothers and sisters. There are those of you who are dealing with a lot of skepticism. And the Lord is saying, I don't need you to understand. I just need you to trust. And even if you have to trust minute by minute until you see the next step, just give me an inch. Just give me an inch. The boy had two fish and five pieces of bread and God fed 5,000 people with it. Just give them the little bit that you have and watch them work. Thank you, God, for being a miracle worker. Thank you, God, for being a hope restorer. Thank you, God, for healing trauma. Some of you have childhood trauma. You've been trying to forgive your abuser. There's someone online. You've been trying to forgive your abuser for a long time, but you feel like every time you think you did, that anger rises back up in your heart. Right now, in the authority of Jesus, Yeshua, we break the back of that offense and we say that you will not step into the new year with it. We say that you are free because he who sem- he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Some of you were molested and you never told anyone. God says it wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. I wasn't okay with it. I am the righteous judge, and I will be your vindicator. I will be your steady reward. You will not have any more nightmares. I curse nightmares in the name of Jesus. I speak sweet sleep over all of you in Proverbs. God promises sweet sleep. So, God, we thank you for sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. We rebuke violence in the name of Jesus. We say that everyone here is protected physically. Their property is protected physically. No break-ins, no theft in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God says some of you have committed crimes against yourself and against others. He said, I will not hold you responsible as long as you repent. Repent means to turn, change your mind, and go in the opposite direction. You can't receive healing if you keep wallowing in sin. Jesus says, repent from your sin and walk away whole. And be new. So God, we thank you. By faith, we receive all of your promises. By faith, we receive your provision. By faith, we receive your restoration. By faith, we receive and keep and lay hold of your peace. And we thank you that the enemy is defeated. We thank you that his plans will not be successful. We declare that we have the victory. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are thankful. We lift our hands and we say hallelujah. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You will not give up on us, God, and we will not give up on you in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to return to your seats full of victory, full of hope, full of promise. And once you get there, I'm going to ask that everyone close their eyes, bow their head, and just listen to a few invitations. Some of you might say, those of you online, you might say, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life. I've never invited him. I've never asked him to be my Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if you hear his voice, his voice is his word. We went through a lot of scripture today, so you heard his voice. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart, because today is the day of salvation. Today. The more we say no, the harder it is to say yes. So if you feel the Lord tugging on your heart, the same way we might tug on a child to say, hey, it's time to come in the house. I know you've been enjoying playing in that playground, but it's time to come. The Father is the one who determines what time it is. And right now he's knocking at your heart and he's saying, it's time. You've been out there on your own. Let me help you. I've got good things prepared for you and you're missing out. You're missing out. I want to protect you from the enemy's plans. So if that's you, we're going to pray for you all together. You also might be saying, you know what, I gave my heart and life to the Lord already, but perhaps you're not living for him. Perhaps you're not spending time with him. Perhaps there's some separation. There's a rift in that relationship, but you want to restore that relationship today. 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sin, he's just, he's faithful, he'll forgive you. He'll restore you like it never happened. So if you need to come to Jesus or you need to come back, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, and I'm the one looking because I'm going to pray for you while you're sitting at your seat, just lift your hand and let me know that I'm praying for you. I see those hands. Online, you can even type, that's me. I need to give my heart to Jesus. That's me. I need to come back. That's me. I see the hands all over the room. Praise God. You guys, you can hear the voice of God. This is what it's like to be a Christian. You respond to his tug and you just simply say yes. And the more you do that, man, the better it gets. You can put your hands down. We're going to pray this prayer as a family. Repeat this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you now. I'm very grateful that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Jesus, thank you for raising from the dead to save me from sin and its penalty. Holy Spirit, I trust you that you'll be with me forever, that you're going to transform me to look more and more like Jesus every single day. I receive your grace and your courage to forgive myself and to forgive others who have hurt me. I receive your grace to trust you as I make adjustments to follow you better. I receive your forgiveness. Thank you for making me one of your family members. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate with those who prayed that prayer. Congratulations. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my gosh, that is the best decision you will ever make in your life. And every good decision has to be followed up with other good decisions. So that QR code that might be on the seat back in, in front of you or a connect card, fill it out, please. Tell us, I made a decision for Christ today because someone from our team just wants to call you and follow up with you, pray with you, answer any questions you have about being a Christ follower. This is not a religion. This is a relationship we're offering you to be one with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, you can give it up again. That's amazing. Yeah. We also want to let you know that if you need specific prayer for anything, there will be a minister down front here that would love to pray with and for you. And if you're a newcomer, please, on your way out to the left, there's a, a newcomer's information tent. We would love to meet you. There's light refreshments in there. Answer any questions you have about the church. And is there any more announcements?
So we still have supplies left over because our church is a church of generosity. You guys give and you give big. So we still have some baby supplies. If you know someone or you yourself may need some baby clothes, baby supplies, head over to our children's area. So again, you're going to walk out of the door and go in this direction. And they would love to be a blessing to you. You guys can stand to your feet. Thank you for tuning in online. I want you to say this with me before you exit. Look at your neighbor if you would. Say, I know times can get tough. But I want to remind you, you were born for this. God bless you all. See you next week.